the I Am Discourses by the Ascended Master Saint Germain. Discourse number 23, December 19, 1932. Christmas Preparation Saint Germain Invocation Thou mighty infinite intelligence, Thou who dost have power over all things, We welcome Thy all-pervading presence, Thou all-pervading life, The animating principle of every human being. We give thanks that I am the great and mighty presence, That I am anchored in the heart of every one of God's children, fulfilling the perfect plan, in spite of all resistance of the outer activity of the mind. We give praise and thanks that the conscious direction of thy mighty energy is sufficient by those of understanding to bless and to prevail with thy wondrous light and intelligence everywhere. I bring you greetings from the great host and personally from Jesus, who will again speak to you over his ray today. The Discourse by Jesus In the fullness of my love, I come to you again today over the great light and sound ray, this time to direct consciously the healing ray to every one of the students. This ray I will sustain for two weeks every day, that they may have the radiance of the healing power. In my ministry to mankind among the hills of Judea, I stirred the latent memory within the inner records of mankind, and its work is still going on today. I wish the students to understand that preceding all conscious healing upon my part, within my own mind, I was always conscious that I am the only healing presence. And as that unlimited I am presence, I had the right, the power, and the ability through that presence to command all outer activity of the mind to be silent and obey its command. Thus, when I spoke to individuals, I spoke with the authority of the I Am Presence, which I recognized as the only intelligence and power acting or that could act. I was conscious of the outer activity of the minds of those of humanity about me. But as I said to you before, it was only when I began using I am the resurrection and the life that the fullness of my mission and how it was to be fulfilled was entirely revealed. This is the particular point I wish to stress with the students today, that within each one of them is the same mighty I am presence which I used to accomplish the perfection of that mighty presence. This seemed to humanity at that time the performing of miracles. However, I assure you, it was but consciously setting into action and use cosmic laws that are ever about you to be set into activity through conscious direction. The mistake that students make and which delays their achievement is in feeling that they are acting a falsehood in declaring the perfection they do not yet see manifest in their appearance or activity. I tell you sincerely from my own experience that we must acknowledge the one presence, intelligence, and power, then claim it as our own in our every thought and activity. It is the only way this mighty perfection can be brought into the outer appearance and the fullness of your use. Because that perfection has not yet appeared seemingly should not deter you from applying and claiming perfection as your own. For anyone with average intelligence has but to stop and think that the energy, the life principle which he is using, is God, the mighty I Am Presence. Therefore, its presence, power, and energy is always self-sustaining. In the claiming of this mighty presence and activity, you consciously set it into action in your life, home, world, and affairs. Today, as in the time of my attainment, the financial struggle seems to be most weighing, and yet within the reach of your conscious manipulation and direction of the mighty energy, substance, and opulence about you, 
you have everything with which to draw to you that wondrous omnipresent opulence of God. When you say, I am, you are stirring that into action to fulfill your conscious demand. One of the first and mightiest things that became clear in my consciousness was my ability, everyone's ability, to qualify this energy consciously directed with whatever the seeming need demanded. Thus the energy may produce for your use gold, silver, money, food, clothing, means of conveyance, or whatever the conscious demand is. All this you must claim with determined conscious effort which knows that in the conscious demand is the I am present speaking and acting. Therefore it has all power and authority to clothe whatever the demand is with its kind. In the consciousness that you are the I am presence acting at all times, you then must know that you are that moment of recognition, an invincible magnet of attraction, which causes every activity of the universe to rush to you to fulfill the demand. The only reason it does not seem to be so is because somewhere in your consciousness there is a feeling of uncertainty, either of your ability, of your authority, or the omnipresence of it to act. But I assure you, as one having attained and having gone through the complete process of attaining, that it is a pleasure, the privilege of myself and others to place before you these simple laws, yet mighty and invincible in their activity, which will give you freedom and dominion over all the things that seem to be such a mountain of obstruction in your way. As you continue to accept and use these laws in your activity, you will find that you are attaining dominion, not only over the one element, but all four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. When you have become conscious of the flame of your divinity, you are acting from the highest of the four elements, which is fire, and the true activity of spirit. As the conscious activity is to the unconscious, so is the conscious use of the flame to the recognition of the light. The natural element of your soul is the flame, accounting for the ancient fire and sun worship. When one becomes conscious that he has, is, and can use and direct this consuming flame, he has entered into mighty power. When one becomes conscious that he has dominion over the four elements, he has but to practice its use to become conscious that he may direct the lightning, master the storm, control the waters, and walk in the midst of the fire unharmed. Will you kindly tell me how any being can have the use of anything until he acknowledges it and knows that he has the ability to make it his servant in use? then by the practice of its use, he becomes absolutely invincible in its direction. I wish so earnestly to make clear to you that you are being given and taught the exact laws which I used and which everyone who has attained the ascended state must use. It is all a matter of use. Once you know of these laws and that I am presence which you are has all the intelligence, power, and authority to consciously direct the energy through the outer activity of your mind. Then do not fear to use it, to heal, to prosper, to bless, and to enlighten your fellow man. Erase from your mind forever that there can be any selfishness in your conscious recognition that the I am presence is directing. It matters not what you require for your attainment wherein it makes you more able or of greater ability and power to bless, then do you not see that there can be no selfishness in the desire for this greater attainment and perfection? For any individual to feel that he must wait upon the attainment of another is a great mistake. Individuals may attain only through their own conscious effort in this wonderful recognition. No one can grow for another or attain for another. But each may be of immense help to the other by knowing with intensity, I am the only presence and intelligence acting within that individual for the one you wish to help.
This may be qualified with whatever the person seems to need most. Every individual's first duty is adoration and love to the one mighty I am presence, which is everywhere present. Do you not see how in this it is a joyous privilege to love your so-called enemy? Because I am the only real presence and activity anywhere? If the ignorance of the outer activity of the mind seems to have created disorder, pain, and limitation, then you know that the miscreation has no power of its own. There is nothing but the wrong belief of the individual to sustain it. Consequently, it has no self-sustaining power. If you have been unfortunate enough to create inharmony, disorder, limitation, then can you not see that you alone, through the power of your I am presence, the consuming flame, must consciously call on the law of forgiveness, consume through that flame of life which you are, everything in your world which you have wrongly created? This should easily make it clear to you how you set about to cleanse your world of its disorder and its mistaken creation. Then you stand forth clothed with the sun, the light of eternal life, youth, beauty, and opulence, holding within your hand for instant use the scepter of power of the I am presence which you are. It is important to know that this one mighty energy does all things according to the quality you give it or the wish you want fulfilled. One thing students should be intensely conscious of, and that is, I am the eternal harmonizing presence and activity everywhere I move, and of everything to which my thought is directed. This constantly used with the feeling of its invincible power will keep the atmosphere of your world purified, harmonized, and held in readiness for any conscious direction to go forth with great speed to its accomplishment. When you wish to speak with authority, silently to or of another individual, speak his given name, and you will find the help the energy sent much more easily received. It is like calling the attention of a person to whom you wish to speak. Naturally, your first impulse is, if you are going to speak to one of the family, you first say, Don, Mary, or Dick, to get his or her attention, and then you proceed to give your message. So it is when directing the energy silently. Within the inner world, in this recognition and use of the I am presence, knowing that I am everywhere present, you see how you may speak to one across the earth through the I am presence as readily as though that one stood in the room in your physical presence. I warn you, if you attempt to use this knowledge to harm another, then remember that through your own soul and body will pass the bolt of your intent to another. Try always to remember that you are not human beings so called, but you are gods and goddesses in embryo, which through the conscious effort you can bring into full dominion. I say to you, beloved students of light, arise, awaken to the fullness of your God dominion, Fearlessly use the conscious knowledge and direction of this mighty I am energy for your freedom, prosperity, blessing, and enlightenment. Each of you is a glittering, dazzling jewel of light, projected into a world of chaos and darkness, that the radiance of your light may expand, expand, and again expand, that all darkness of the earth be consumed in this mighty radiance of the I am presence which you are. Do not hesitate, beloved children. Grasp this scepter of your power and dominion. Use it to heal, to bless, to prosper, to enlighten, and you will find all earthly things bowing before you and rushing to fulfill your slightest demand. Such beloved ones, beloved brothers and sisters, the one mighty presence which I am is the conscious ability I convey to you this day. With its self-sustaining strength, courage, power, and enlightenment to go forth attaining your freedom now with these personal rays which I project to each of you for these two weeks 
I assure you these rays are no idle fancy, but a tangible current of energy containing in it all things and blessing you according to your acceptance. I clothe you in this mantle of light. Within it is all power. I hold you close in my mighty embrace, and I am with you every hour. Saint Germain, again have you been blessed by that electrifying presence. I need not add to it unless there are questions. When you realize that I am is the only acting presence, power and ability to think in your brain cells, and you are accepting only the activity of the I am present, then you make it the all power fulfilling every outer desire. Therefore, if you desire something needful in the outer activity, it is the I am presence producing it through your conscious demand, which has nothing to do with so-called human desire. Say often, I am always loving obedience unto the light. Everything will become more alert, more quickened, and more powerfully protected as you use the I am presence more and more. The Great Central Sun Magnet the more one is conscious of this great magnet working, the more powerfully it acts in his own sphere. An awakened individual never uses a destructive force. When the master of Suern projected the force and the army was killed, he simply projected it for the protection of his people, and the destructive qualities which the others brought with them to slay and kill qualified the force sent out by the master and it destroyed those who sent their destructive qualities out. You can see how easily it would do that when they came to destroy. Every individual, if he have understanding, has a right to protect himself. The students should always be taught never to judge the action of a greater intelligence than themselves. When phenomenon is produced by an ascended master, the activity so transcends the intelligence witnessing it that it is most difficult for them to be sustained in the acceptance of the actual truth of it. It is utterly impossible to satisfy the outer activity of the mind. Projected vision. The etheric record is reclothed in substance. You cannot reclothe a record of scenes except in their own environment. The individual's record goes with him wherever he goes and can be reclothed anywhere he is. Benediction Thou mighty, infinite presence, thou wondrous brother of light, wisdom, love, and power, we give thanks for thy radiant presence, glorifying all who look to thee and in that glorious presence we send to all mankind thy enfolding light, lifting them into thy presence always.